Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Ron Doyle with you on a how to uh, install switches in bedrooms that have fan and light separated on two different switches and uh, basic installation of a closet light switch. Uh, here we go. We've got, I'm going to start with the closet light, we've got a feed and we have a light for the closet. And what I'm going to do is strip these wires out for you. Start about three quarters of an inch from the back of the box, strip down to the feed. Pull your wire back, put your blade on your insulation, don't slice, just push and pull. That will save a lot of accidental cuts, nicks, and tears in your insulation jacket. Got the trash box set up below me for a tidier job site, but we want to pull this paper back and pull it off. So I'm starting three quarters of an inch from the back, I'm scoring down the wire, I'm sliding my hand up past my blade, and then I'm continuing my cut. When you get down to the end, you can slice heavy. On this part of the jacket, you want to slice really, really light, barely scoring the jacket, so we're not cutting, we're scoring. Put your finger to the back, put your blade on it, it's hard to see with my big hands in the way, put your blade on it and pull. That way you're not slicing accidentally cutting the jacket. Grab your paper insulation off of your own mix and pull it. And the first thing that we do is we do grounds, grounds always first. Take your wires, tuck your neutrals and hots to the back, take your grounds and bring them together, such as that fashion. Take these grounds and twist them together until you get approximately five inches from the back of the box to the front. Take your clines or cutters or dikes, cut off the extra copper wire, throw it in your scrap bucket. Now on this installation I use greenies. These are uh, ground wire nuts and they're especially made for doing pigtails off the ground. So you can see the hole in the end of it. Typical wire nuts don't have that hole. Slide that over your wire and snug that up. I always touch my, tuck my grounds into the left side. So pushing the ground down, pushing the ground right up. On the end of that ground, I do my hook. Now I do my hook the width of this uh, hybrid lineman pliers. Uh, these are Klein's J2158CR. And what I do after I do my hook, I hook my wire, take my device screwdriver of your choice, Snug that up and let it hang. Now the switches that I buy always have the grounds on the bottom. Uh, this is a Eaton 15 amp uh, switch. I never use the stab, stab locks in the back. Uh, they're more of a, a, a fire hazard than anything. Take your grounds or your neutrals, pull them down to the bottom corner of the box and start twisting them. Now your neutrals aren't switched. You're going to tie these together. You want approximately six inches of wire from the back of the box to the front. I usually leave a little long. And we are going to tie this with a yellow wire nut. Now in stripping this, I do about 7 eighths to 1 inch of strip on both of these. Line them up, put them together, put your linemans on, and I twist them in that fashion. And then I cut them off so I've got approximately half inch to 5 eighths of reveal left. You put your wire nut on it, take your wire, no folds, you want nice radiuses, to the back of the box. You tuck that wire in. Bring your hots out. You want to get a proximate measurement that you're going to consistently use. And I never measure, but I've, I've got a, a good guesstimate of what I want out of the box. But there is a code from the back of the box to the front, a minimum of six inches. And uh, when I do them, I always have more than that. Uh, the inspectors actually said I'm leaving too much wire. Uh, he doesn't mind it, but uh, he said I was leaving a little bit much. I'd rather have a little bit much now so that I can work with it later if there's an issue. I strip one inch on my screw terminals for switches. I'm binding the last three-eighths of an inch, and I'm spinning. Same thing on this, three-eighths and spinning. Turn your switch right side up. Put your, that's the hot leg, put the hot leg on. Tighten it up. This is your closet light hot leg. Onto the light itself. Always turn in a clockwise fashion, and always make sure you hook the wire on so that when you're tightening it, the wire gets tighter and it doesn't spin off. Take your wires and coat your wires in the box so that you are not kinking them. No kinks. Radiuses, radiuses are better than tight bends and kinks. I'm going to tighten this up with my, uh, with my Milwaukee Impact. Now if you notice, there's a little bit more reveal on this side of the box. So I'm pushing the switch over to hide more of that reveal. If you're using standard plates, you want standard size plates, you want to pay attention to that. So I see a lot of guys that are doing a trim out. They'll take these packages, they'll leave the plastic on, and they'll get a razor knife and they'll score the back or score the front and mess the plate up. I've got an easier way. Grab the corner of the plate. Strong hold it at the base. 
and pull off. No razor blade needed. These are Eaton um, mid-size unbreakable plates. You can see them giving a nice twist to that. They are preset with screws. This is one little trick. Take this screw, you want to see if this plate is lined up. If you push this on and push it to the wall, you're going to pop these screws out. First check it like this, put it on loosely, see if it's lined up and it looks level. If it is, make sure the switch is in the on position. That way if it gets away from you, it's not falling to the floor. Let's bend it over is good in my book. Get your screws started. Now in a, week, a neat and workmanlike fashion, whatever you do in a house, you want to keep the same thing every time. So when I install switches in houses, I always turn the screws vertically. You could do it horizontally, it doesn't matter. But to be neat and tidy, the customers pay attention to this stuff. If you've got screws that are all which way, they will see that, they will notice it on their house that they're paying for. Um, turn them either horizontal or vertical, one or the other. Now we're gonna come over here to this switch, and I'm gonna get you a little closer because you're a little far away, now that that one's done. All right, so we have a feed into the box. This is a continuous feed, a feed to other. And this, this is the double switch leg. So this is a 14.3, these are 14.2s, feed in, feed out. And this is a feed to the light. So the first thing we're gonna do, strip the jackets back. So you wanna stop your blade, move your hand, and then proceed with the cut. That will save you a great deal of pain and aggravation and bloodshed on your fingers. Take your paper, push your paper up, pull it to the back, put your fingertip on it, and that'll break off. That paper's not that strong. Three quarters of an inch from the back of the box, score down, move your hand, finish the score. Now if you notice on these cuts, that I'm doing, I'm starting at the back, three quarters of an inch from the box. You can't even hear my cut. When I get to this point, I'm gonna do it hard and heavy. Basically, you're ripping a score. You're not ripping a cut. Put your blade onto the insulation, such as, such as so. Take your jacket and pull it. I'll give you a close-up. You get an idea of what that looks like. So now we're going to take our grounds. We're going to pull our grounds to the bottom, making sure that the grounds aren't cross crossing the neutrals and the hots. We're going to pull the neutrals and hots up. We're going to tuck our wires over to one corner. Now in this case, we have two switches. One, two, two gang box. These are Carlon, two gang nylons. We're going to spin these wires together. Now in this particular hybrid plier, if you haven't modified this yet, I'm going to do a video in the future on uh, this hybrid lineman's plier with the uh, gray grip. And it is made by a Klein. Um, the, there's one problem with these, and it is inside of the jaw, there's a line that goes across here that on a brand new pair of pliers, I grind that line off. That line, if you don't alter that and take that sharp edge off, you will score these grounds, and as you are bending them in the box, they will break off. On the open side, away from the strippers, I'll grasp it about an inch from the box, grasp it, and then start spinning. And then I'll stick my finger on the grounds in the back, push them down as I'm doing a couple turns. Okay? I'll pick out the two longest grounds, which are these two, if you can see that. And I'll take the short ground, put my cutters by it, and I'll cut it off. Now, on the closet light switch, we did a greenie. Now, on this particular switch, we can't do a greenie. We are using Buchanan sleeves. Buchanan was the original company that designed these. Uh, these are made out of copper. Here's two sizes. Here's a small barrel. Here's a bigger barrel. Um, these are sold in, in five-pack and multi-pack. Uh, these are actually copper. They make these. Other manufacturers make these. And these are also made in a coated steel. I prefer the... Uh, I use the Mag Magno Grip um, bag, and these are a ferrous material. These are uh, ferrous with a coating on them, and these also are great for holding wire nuts. Um, I haven't really had any issues with them bouncing out. I also use this for my cable staples. It works awesome. But we're going to take a Buchanan with the furl flared end and insert it onto the grounds. Slide it up to where the three wires intersect each other. We're going to open our clines up and use this crimper. We're going to put our sleeve in there making sure all the wires are intersecting and leave just a tad bit, an eighth of an inch out of the back, crimp it, grab this, now that you've got it crimped, you can see the, you can see the uh, Buchanan, we're going to radius our wires into the back of the box, we're going to take our grounds and then coach them to the bottom left corners, and then I'm going to cut off the extra, I'm going to bend a hook for my switches, I'm going to take my switches, I'm going to install them as so, and I'm going to leave them hang after these are snugged up. Now we're going to work on our, our neutrals. Pull your neutrals to the bottom, 
pull your hots to the top. Group them in the corner. Spin them so you get a nice little light twist on. Cut them off. Now we're going to strip back. We're going to strip back one inch on each side. Seven eighths to one inch. Now what I'm going to do, because we've been moving these wires around, I'm going to flush them up. Now if you don't want to stab your fingers, you can put your cutters to them and they grasp tightly. Grab all three of your wires and loose grip, put these on, loose grip, and let this spin over the wires. And you're going to see about seven eighths of an inch out. I'm going to cut it back so that I've got about five eighths of an inch now. We're going to take on three 14, 14 uh, gauge wires. We're going to put a yellow wire nut on it. Now on these wires, your fingers over time on 12 gauge and 14 will get sore, especially with 12. And uh, I prefer the ideal uh, wire twisting multi screwdriver. So it's a six in one um, and it has a nut driver device at the end. These wire nuts I use are Morris wire nuts. And these uh, ideal, this ideal screwdriver fits multiple sizes of wire nuts, not, not only ideal brand, they fit multiple brands. Um, this is uh, one of the best things that I think I bought for doing electrical work, it saves your fingertips. So now that I got that snug, we're gonna take that neutral, we're gonna do a nice little coil to the back of the box. Now we're gonna do our hots, okay? We gotta feed in and feed out. We're gonna spiral these together. And on doing this job, we need two pigtails. So what I'm gonna do, gotta do a minimum of six inches from the back of the box. I'm gonna cut it, okay? One of these pigtails I can use. That one's too short, a little too short for my taste. So I got another, I got another pigtail here. I'm going to strip seven eighths of an inch off of it. Now that these two wires are cut and lined up, I'm going to strip seven eighths of an inch on those. Now we're going to take all four of these. These are pre-twisted, lightly twisted. We're going to group all four of these together. We're going to get our lines, and we're going to start spinning loosely. Now on this one, I'm going to show you up close what it looks like. All right, we've spun it. We have spun that. It's nice and tight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and snip the ends off so that Hold the camera doing this at one time. All right. So if you look at the very end, if you look at the very end of this, you see all four wires. One of them's not shorter than the other. They're even. Put you back on this, on the stand, and we are going to use a ten wire nut. We are twisting together four 14 gauge wires now. We are going to coach that to the back of the box, such as so, and we're going to take these and we're going to splay them out like that. Now on this wire, which is uh, the uh, blue on the ceiling fan goes to red, and black, see red and blue go together. Blue on the ceiling fan is the light. I was attached to the red wire. The black is the fan motor itself, so black to black, and then red to blue. And then I want the first switch coming into this ring to be the light, and the second switch to be the fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these wires, I'm going to do a coil to the back, no, no kinks, coils, and then I'm going to wrap that one back over, and I'm going to bring them to the bottom. So I know these are my switch legs, these are my hot legs. I'm going to cut these wires to an even length hanging out of the wall. I'm going to cut a little bit on this one and a little bit on this one so they're all pretty much even. I'm going to strip back. Let me fall off of there. Uh, seven eighths to one inch. Grab three eighths of an inch and curl it to make my hook. Now this jaw thickness on this plier makes a nice, a nice thickness for the actual uh, termination of the screw. And I got my trash box I'm launching this stuff into. Some of it I'm hitting, some of it I'm not, but it uh, makes the cleanup a little easier for later. Now what we're going to do is work on one switch at a time. I'm going to swing this up, put your, put your uh, wire terminations onto these in a fashion that when you tighten the screw, it's getting tighter around the screw terminal. So we've got our, the red wires are light on our fan, and this black at the top is our hot. Swing this one around. This is the fan motor. I'm going to tighten that one up, and this is our, our feed. I'm going to tighten that one up. So now, we're taking these grounds and we're making sure that they're down at the bottom, pushing them down, and I'm coaching the switch into position. Just keep in mind, you don't want any kinks into that wire. I'm going to get my impact driver. I'm going to set these screws in. This is a big life saver, uh, wrist saver for an electrician. Uh, if, you don't, if you're doing a lot of outlets and receptacles, uh, I would highly recommend you get an impact driver such as this. This is a Milwaukee M12. DeWalt makes one too. Other companies also. But uh, save on the twisting motion of your wrist. You think about it, you've got to have your, your uh, wrist to last you the rest of your life. And you don't want corporal tunnel. I uh, worked around a bunch of people and they, they're now, they now have 
and they'll have portal tunnel from uh, repetitious work and movement. So what I've done, I've pushed this all the way over to the damaged side. There's more gap here than there is over here. This is tight. I push this one all the way over and I tighten it up. I'm pushing this one all the way over and I'm tightening that one up. Okay. Best thing to do is turn these switches on in the up position. Like I said, grab your package on the corner, pull down, no utility knife needed. Same way as a single plate, but now we've got an alignment issue. We're going to find out if this is aligned properly. And if your box and your stud is aligned properly and everything looks level and square, uh, first thing I do is put this on backwards. And then you can look at your spacings as you're holding this. And you can also look horizontally and vertically and see if this is level and square. Now that I've got uh, horizontally level and, it's, and the spaces are evenly spaced, I take this and I flip this around. I hang it onto the switches. And I loosely start one screw at a time. You get that one started, go to the very next screw. Get that one started, make sure they're not cross-threaded. Get that one started. Get that one started. Then push the, push the cover plate in. Finish snugging your screws up. Like I said, I'm doing mine in the vertical fashion. Not overly tight. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is a basic wire installation on a two-gang switch, one for the light and one for the ceiling fan. Uh, and this is wired off of a 14.3. Uh, 14.2 coming in, 14.2 coming out, and 14.3 going to the ceiling fan. Look, if you all thought this was helpful and insightful in any way in doing your electrical project, please give me a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe. Greatly appreciate it. I'm trying to grow my channel. I uh, wish you all a wonderful, safe, and blessed day. Thank you.